Hello everybody, in this video let's define complex permittivity. So recall from the last video we derived the Maxwell's equations in the phasor form and we had all four of Maxwell's equations and they looked like this. Now the one that we want to look at in this video is going to be Ampere's law which is down here and the reason we want to look at that is because Ampere's law it has both this J term, the, the source current, and an electric field whereas Faraday's law just has one term on the right hand side. So if we can do something which is defining a complex permittivity, we would be able to perhaps reduce this down to just one term and make these equations look a bit similar and maybe use that similarity to solve some of our problems a bit more easily. So starting with Ampere's law, that looks like this, we can see that again it has those two terms. Now recall that we have this other relationship which is that the current J is equal to sigma E. So we have a relationship between a current density and the electric field and we can rewrite that in phasors as well. Now if you have forgotten about this just go ahead and take a look. I'll link a video to review Ohm's law which tells us about this relationship between the source current and the electric field. So if you have that, you can then replace this J term with an omega E term. And now we have two E fields, two electric fields on the right hand side. So starting from there, we can start to see that we might be able to simplify this a bit more. And we can pull the electric field out on each side and create this coefficient that's sigma E plus J omega epsilon. Now recall, right, the J omega, this is going to be a phasor operation, right? So in the phasor domain, J omega is like taking a derivative. And because of that, we want to kind of keep that separate out in front here, just as a reminder that this whole term is going to be, right? This is the same as taking the derivative of this whole term. So for that reason, we'll pull the J omega out. Now, once we've pulled that J omega out, we have these two terms inside of the parentheses here, right? There's two terms here and we, want to maybe get that j out of the denominator, we'll multiply by j over j. This is a common method. And that gives us a minus j uh, sigma over omega. All right, now rearranging that, we now have placed it such that we have the real part in front and then the imaginary terms second. And this is just like the way we like to write complex numbers in rectangular forms, a plus jb. Therefore, we can redefine this, this term as a complex, a complete complex number. We can say that um, we have this permittivity epsilon sub c is equal to epsilon minus j sigma over omega. So we've defined now this complex per permittivity where this c right, is going to stand for a complex in our textbook and it's epsilon prime minus j epsilon double prime where the epsilon prime is equal to epsilon. This is the epsilon that we all know and love, right? What, that we've used many times. Whereas the epsilon double prime is the sigma over the omega. So the epsilon double prime is actually related to both the conductivity of the material as well as the frequency of the material. And this epsilon double prime, right? This is like A and this is like B if we were to write the complex number as a minus jb in this case. Now going back to Ampere's equation we can then see that we could just substitute this whole term. We could just substitute our newly defined complex permittivity in. Now that simplifies our equation quite a bit, right? So instead of having these two terms we've simplified it down to one term with that complex permittivity where the complex permittivity is defined like this. Thank you, and I will see you in the next video.